Hey, it's Roger, and I uh, just wanted to do a review and analysis of Damajaya Hiriarachi, World Champion Holy Speaking 2014, uh, ICC Beginning Beginning News Speech. Now, this speech is, is in, the, in the past few years, has been run out as one of the best, you know, one of the best speeches, because it's really funny and it's really humorous, and I just want to notice that with this guy, he starts off with a huge smile, which automatically endears him to the audience really well done and also something I want you to notice is his dress he's he's different he's wearing a tan suit he's got the flower in his the prop which is the chief prop for his speech is in his pocket the tie matches the color of the flower nice nice difference if he'd come out in black uh, black and you know black suit with a white shirt it would have, would have been okay but uh, he definitely stands out and looks different and it just comes in with the theme of his speech so it could also be like you know the um, you know the different the colors of the flower with his, with his clothes. Yeah, so let's get into it. You and I. Nice long pause to begin the speech. Uh, two three second pause before when he grabs that um, grabs the flower. Are not very different from this flower. Just like this flower is unique. You are unique. And, and he's introduced us to something which is um, kind of like a personification or a, a metaphor or something. Like <clears throat> the, saying that the flower, comparing the flower to the human being, very clever to open the speech with something like that. Nice little, uh, nice little, little strategy. All of us has something special that makes us as good. And notice as he does, what he does is he's, he's, he's gesturing with the flower. With every word, he's bam, bam, bam. He's he's pointing on that flower. It's it's very clever. Do you know what makes you special? Moving back, so he's using this stage front back. Now the answer to that can be a little difficult to find. Nice rhetorical question. Because sometimes life has a cruel way of picking out. Nice strategy. You know, breaking up the prop. Breaking you in two. And throwing it into the trash. So that's a very great strategy with the um, the flower and the metaphor of the flower and breaking up the flower and putting it in the trash and, and, the, and the flower obviously being a human being. Very powerful. That that penetrates straight to the subconscious mind, gets people thinking automatically with such an opening. The novelty is there. Uh, even if he'd done nothing else for the rest of his speech, if he'd just done a, a standard job, he did a brilliant job for the rest of his speech. If he'd just done an average job for the rest of his speech, you know, an opening like that can really set you up to win very clearly. And when you're broken, it's very difficult to feel special. Yeah, broken, special. The kind of chair. He's starting to introduce these themes: broken, special, unique. My fellow flowers. Lovely, lovely, you, Mr. Contest Chair. My fellow flowers. Very clever. Very clever. He's, again, he's hooking into that metaphor. I don't know if he did that intentionally, but it's very clever. And he gets a nice little laugh. Then. I can remember the first time I broke. I was 17 years old. The first time I broke. Again, he's the, he talked about the flower. Now he's talking about the first time he broke. I had already flunked high school and managed to get myself arrested. Now, I wasn't afraid of the cops. But there was one person I was very afraid of. And that was my mama. Razor! Very clever. Uh, everyone's got a mum, so he's bringing it back into the really human thing of relationships, and everyone's got a mum. And now, what I love about this speech is that he's he immediately he's getting the audience re interaction, and he does this through the whole speech. So he's, Raise your hand. Yep. And if you have an emotional mother, let me see. Immediately, everyone's put them all time. together. You get my mum. Great little sense of humour and body language, and twirling his finger like that. Um, and he does that throughout the speech, really clever, yeah. Great laugh. Man. I can hear her scream outside the police station, even the cops were afraid. She came up to me, held the iron bars, looked it. Nice use of mime. Eyes, and I saw a tear coming down her face. Now I've seen my mama cry before. I love his gestures. He uses very like bam and, and very soft out gestures, and then he brings them back in. Cry, 
three types of tears. Three types of tears, here we go. Nice. Tears of joy, tears of sorrow, and tears of shame. Yep. So the tears of joy, again, we've got the sorrow, three times, uh, three types of tears, which is nice, you know, having threes um, in your speech. And he uses the contrast, so one side is the joy, the sorrow, and then he points to himself, a nice gesture to point to himself of shame. And everyone, I'm sure everyone in the audience can identify with shame. And when a son sees a mother cry, tears of shame, that's a life-changing moment. She looked at me and said, son. Back to the bars. And he immediately grabs it, doesn't need you to describe it. She's, he's back at the bars in the jail cell. I want you to be a better man. That night, when I drove home, my dad was waiting for me at home. Now my dad is a cool dad. Raise your hand if you have a cool dad. Again, love the audience interaction. <laughs> And he's a cool guy, so uh, his dad's a cool. So you see, his dad has kind of influence on him. And again, great. This is <clears throat> no other speech than probably in the last five, you know, long bit of time in Toastmasters has got so much uh, interaction. That's why this speech is so loved. Put them all together, you get my dad. Another great laugh. My dad came up to me and said, "Son, it's okay. You flunked your exams. You already got arrested. That's fine." You get that from your mother's side. Great, great joke, and everyone can relate to that, the mother and father thing. <clears throat> yeah, he's introduced, you know, the, the, the key relationships here. <clears throat> his mother, that's the first story. Now his dad is the second story. Powerful, everyone, everyone's got a mother, everyone's got a father. Really clever, clever writing. I want you to start working immediately. And I said, okay. So my dad, took me to meet one of his friends, called Sam. Now Sam was an accountant. And here we are into the third story of the speech with another character, which is Sam. An accounting firm, and had generously decided to make me his personal assistant. And there he was. He looked like a teddy bear. A nice little metaphor, or uh, he looked like a teddy bear, um, or simile. <laughs> Metaphor, uh, similar, similar likes. He looked like a teddy bear, and that's a beautiful description because everyone's, you know, people know what a teddy bear is, and then you immediately start to look, think of a man that would be like a teddy bear. Very clever use of characterization, and I love to notice how he's facing this way, and he faces right and he faces left, which is unusual. He doesn't sort of face at an angle. He faces uh, directly to the left or right of the stage, which is different. You don't see that much. Very clever, clever way of doing it. Now, I just wanted to touch on uh, another thing was the importance of mentors in the story. So he writes himself in his. Then Joe writes himself in as the lost hero. You know, the hero is lost. He's he's lost. A lost character. He's already been in jail. And then the first, and then what happens is he encounters mentors who put him back on track. So the first mentor he met was his mum. The second mentor, obviously, was his dad. These are the key mentors in our life usually. Now the third mentor, which is we're reading now, is Sam. But this yeah. man was special. And again, the use of the word special, lovely repetition. Of I looked at him, and he looked at me. And then he said the most amazing thing. Nice use of gesture there. The most amazing thing. Very clever. Very soft. I love how he's so relaxed. It's not. I see something in you. Nice. You see, drag that word out. I see something in you. But I don't know what it is. Love it. This is the, this is the key hook of this, this speech that I see something new, but I don't know what it is. And he repeats and repeats and repeats, as you should do in your speech. Repeat and repeat and repeat the message over and over again. And, and he does it so well. If you decide to work with me, I can help you find that something. And I was like, whoa, that's the first time in my whole life somebody has ever told this he's on the end. Great. And gesture. I started working for Sam. And every day after work, he used to tell me stories. And notice with him that his gestures tend to be around here. Um, he doesn't use big, much big gestures out here, but there are a lot of them around here. Very clever. That's, that's his style. About the world, and he's, uh, about history, about culture, about philosophy. Nice. And yeah, but, 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 nice gestures. And it was much more interesting than what I learned in school. And I discovered I can grieve. And I started grieving, ladies and gentlemen. 
again, so notice the gesture to the heart, so he's pointing to the heart, I can dream. Whereas before, he pointed to the heart and he said, shame. So that's a nice, I don't know if that's unconscious or conscious, he did it on purpose. But it's very, you know, it, it's nice, it's a repetition of that key gesture, heart, you know, where it was shame, now it's about I can dream. He's encountered his mentors and now he can dream. After one year, I went back into high school, completed my exam, and went into college. I just love how he just, he casually strolls on stage. There's no urgency or anything to what he does. It's very cool and relaxed. And that's definitely his character and his style. Very cool. After successfully completing college, I found a great girl, but not a job. <clears throat> nice I one. didn't know nice what one. I wanted to do with my life. Have you ever had that problem? Again, nice rhetorical question. Have you ever had that problem? And when you're lost, it's difficult to feel special. Yeah, feel special. Nice little gestures there. So I went back to my cool dad. And I said, Dad, I feel lost. He said, you are like your mother. <laughs> nice little humor there where he goes, so again, it's that relationship between him and his dad. Um, and he goes back to her and, and then he turns, you know, it's, it's a great humorous moment. Gets a great laugh. So my dad introduced me to this strange club that had a strange name with strange people. Again, uh, the repetition of the word strange club, strange name, strange people. Nice little repetition there. And he shuffled each side as he did that strange, strange, strange. Very clever. Talk. And the On the first drops, meeting, those Toastmasters. Yeah. they told me to do something called a table top. Nice, nice and table topic little gestures there. I aced it. But while I was speaking, I see a strange man seated in the back row. Humble, simple. The unfailing quality of kindness in his eyes. Now, now this is very brilliant. You know, this is clever because strange man sitting in the back row with unfailing quality of kindness in his eyes. Every male, <clears throat> every middle-aged male and above, in the audience would have identified, <clears throat> would have seen themselves as that mentor. And that's what goes on in Toastmasters. Everyone would have seen themselves as that mentor. And uh, and that's so clever. I don't know if he did it on purpose, but, but it's so clever because immediately every male, and probably most of the judges are male, would have, uh, would have identified with that. You would have won big points with that. As soon as I finished, he walked up to me, looked me head straight in the eye and said, Son, I see something in you, but I don't know what it is. Again, the repetition of the, the key phrase in the speech. If you come here twice a month, maybe we can find that something. And ladies and gentlemen, I discovered I could speak, and I love speaking. And that led me to become a teacher. I know what it's like to not have enough money in your bank. I know what it's like to worry when the bills start coming in. And sometimes... Nice no, little repetition, I know what it's like, I know what it's like there. So there's some two repetitions, but yeah, yeah, works. So the night, I wake up my beautiful wife and I ask her, honey... And now we come to the, the so he said the mother and the father, he said Sam, he said the Toastmasters guy. And now he comes to the fifth mentor in the story, which is his wife. And, and his wife's going to, you know, he's feeling a bit lost. His wife's going to set him straight. Why did you marry me? She says, I saw something in you. But I still don't know what it is. Really clever. And so he's got some key relationships here um, in your life. And these, these, these relationships are like archetypes. So he's got his mother, he's got his father, he's got Sam, which is his boss, he's got the Toastmasters mentor, and he's got his wife. That's a, that's a key relationship. Everyone's got a husband or a wife. Um, or, you know, we're guessing the boyfriend or girlfriend in the audience, so they can identify. Great laughing. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm a dreamer, I'm a speaker, and I learned the unfailing quality of unconditional love. And notice as he says that, he just sort of works his way back to the stage, back to the beat. My wife. I was broken. And I've been broken, lost, and broke many times in my life. 
Love the use of the repetition, the theme broken. Broke, I was broken. I've been broken, lost, and broke many times in my life. But the people in my life were able to reach into the trash can. Again, nice just to the heart, the people in my life. And make me whole again. And so the metaphor is complete. If it was up to me, mm. I would have never been able to do that. And now the novelty is, the audience is going, wow, he's pulled the flower out, you know, and it's, and it's, it's a new flower. And, and <clears throat> the novelty has come full circle and it's completely, really, really clever. And this is why if you have great people in your life, no matter how broke, how lost, or how broken you become. Yeah, the, th the three is the triads. How broke, how lost, or how broken you become. People, relationships, the core of that. Great universal message, universal theme for this speech. They can piece you back together. Ladies and gentlemen, when I look at you... I okay, before we go to the last bit. Now, now I talked a bit about in my book about, you know, the hero is not the hero. So he, he's painted himself as the, you know, sort of like the, the lost hero who, who sort of encounters the five mentors in the speech and he comes back on track. But he's not the real hero. The hero in this speech is the audience. And he points to the audience. The, the hero in the speech, the hero in the speech is obviously the mentors, his mother, his father, Sam, the Toastmasters mentor, and his wife. The hero is also the audience. And that is so powerful in how he did this. And putting it, putting it back, the call to action, back on the audience. Really clever. I see something else, but I don't know what it is. Over to you. Very cool. And he says, over to you. <laughs> Okay, I see something new, I don't know what it is, to the audience, really clever, you know, he did that, the characters tell, did tell him that, and now he mentors the audience, and the audience goes, um, and over to you, that's so cool, that's such a cool way to end the speech, very cool, just shows his confidence, and listen to that, he's one, he's one, you can hear the, the, the applause, and now he throws the flower into the audience, he's, you know he's funny speech. He's cool, man. All right. Okay, I hope you like that analysis, and um, have a good day.